Hello, welcome to week seven. We are including this week four weeks away from finishing the school year, your freshman year. Um, I know that there's several people that came up to me last week and told me that they are going to be absent this coming week and possibly part of week eight. So if that's you, you should be watching this video for that reason. So let's get to it. Um, this week we are, sh we should be wrapping up reading Born a Crime. So we have week seven Google Slides. Um, we, chapter 18 is the last chapter in the book and it is a big one. It's going to take about an hour and a half to finish reading it. So we're going to kind of break that chapter up between the two synchronous days this week and then we'll probably have to finish it next week. But you should be finished reading your asynchronous work after this week. So this week you're going to read chapter 16 and 17. And um, there's also going to be a very quick Google form that you need to fill out for async. It's um, a choice reading check-in. So if you remember a couple weeks ago, we went to the library and you got a choice reading book. And I'm going to have you fill out that form to just check in with me and tell me, how did you like the book? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you have mixed feelings about it? Did you even read it? Um, so that will be a choice form for you to fill out or choice reading check-in form and then you need to start working on your final project because after the second synchronous day of this week you will have your graphic organizer complete and that should give you a really good starting point for your project so that is our schedule for this week and as a reminder all of our library books are due back this friday may 28th um, I'm going to check in with our librarian, Ms. Mazizo, and see if those of you that checked out the Trevor Noah book, if you can keep it until next week. Um, but if not, you can always use the PDF. And those of you that borrowed a copy of Born a Crime from me in my personal library, um, just make sure that I get that book back before week 10. So just a, remember, turn, a reminder, turn your books in. Okay, let's start with some response review. So you were supposed to read the second half of chapter 15 as your async last week. So I want you to reread or kind of look at pages 194 through 196 again. Um, it'll be talking about this quote here. I want you to look at that again and I want you to respond to this question and tell me who determines how history is taught. What other thoughts come to mind when you look at this passage again? So the quote specifically says, Holocaust victims count because Hitler counted them. Six million people killed. We can all look at that number and rightly be horrified, but when you read through the history of atrocities against Africans, there are no numbers, only guesses. It's harder to be horrified by a guess. So in that passage, I want you to take a look at it and tell me your thoughts. Um, who do you think determines how history is taught? Is there a way that that is determined? So give me your response to that and pause this video. Okay, so let's do some review of the second half of chapter 15. So um, there was a lot going on in this chapter. So Trevor's friend Bongani convinces him to get a DJ gig. Um, we know that he makes music with burning CDs and um, has kind of gotten into that entrepreneurial side of himself. So their first gig was a success and they started getting booked more and more. And then we learn about the, the fact that they have dancers a part of their group, um, one of them being Bongani's neighbor named Hitler. And we learn why his name is Hitler because people um, in South Africa since the time of colonialism were given an English name and a traditional name. So typically their English names were gonna be something either biblical, maybe a celebrity if it's you know more newer modern times or a european name and he talks about how hitler was is taught and seen as the world's greatest madman in america but and in europe but in other parts of the world that might not be the case because there's other tragedies that have happened around the world and depending on where you grow up um they tend to focus on different things so the fact that bongani's neighbor was named hitler was not really shocking to anybody because they didn't really have the same perspective of Hitler that we have growing up in America and what we're taught with the Holocaust unit. Um, so then we learned that they were hired to do a event at a Jewish school and they start chanting, go Hitler. And there's a lot of miscommunication because everybody at the school thinks that they're there to insult them and Trevor thinks that they're being racist. And so it's a big miscommunication. Um, 
but it's interesting to see how different perspectives can influence how you perceive things. Okay, so let's look at chapter 13. This was one of the other chapters you were supposed to read last week for async. So we learn about um, a story that Trevor tells when he is in high school. He has this friend named Teddy, and they were kind of known as partners in crime. They would get into trouble a lot. And there was this one incident where they were caught stealing and eating alcohol-filled chocolates from a gift store mall um, in the mall that they had in their neighborhood area. So they get caught. The mall cops are running after them. And at one point, as they're trying to get away, Trevor goes in one direction. Teddy goes in the other. Teddy gets caught and is arrested and expelled from school. And then Trevor is called to the principal's office the very next day and is shown a very grainy black and white video footage from the mall security system of the two of them running away from the mall cops. And um, the principal thinks that the kid that's with Teddy in this video is a white kid. And Trevor is very confused because it seems very obvious to him that it's him in the video and he knows it was him. And he feels kind of shocked and angry that they they can't recognize that that's him. They just assume it's a white person um, and that their own construct of race kind of prevented them from seeing what, who was sitting right there in front of him. So he does not admit to the fact that he was a part of it and um, kind of has an experience of, of trying to, um, he doesn't want to communicate the fact that he did it, but he's also kind of angry that, it's not obvious to them that it was him. So that was chapter 13. Okay, um, so we have chapter 18, like I said, we're gonna break it up. So to, for the first synchronous day, either Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on your cohort, we're gonna read pages 247 through 261. And then we'll continue on from there on the second synchronous day. You, and like I said, asynchronous, you're reading chapter 16 and 17. So after reading the first part of chapter 18, I want you to tell me what was Abel like when Trevor and Patricia first met him? How does Trevor describe his personality? What does he think about him? So in the beginning of their relationship, um, what is Abel like? So go ahead and pause this video and write down your responses. Okay, continuing on through the chapter, I want you to tell me why do you think that Patricia chose to stay with Abel. Do you think that she ever considered leaving him? Um, because we know that their relationship was not always great. So what do you think about that? Do you think that she had an option? Do you think she ever considered it? Okay, so that was our first synchronous day. So synchronous day two. Um, so before we get into what we have today, I want you to tell me how you would answer this question um, and it doesn't have to be connected to the book it could be just in general so i want you to answer these eq writing prompts for me to what extent is our identity shaped by culture and society meaning how how much influence does culture and society have on shaping our identity so give me your thoughts on that and write that down the second question, how does empathy change the way that we view and interact with others? We've kind of had a little bit of conversation around empathy um, with the Brene Brown video that we watched, but I want you to tell me in your own words, how does empathy change the way that you view and interact with other people? Okay, so we're gonna keep reading chapter 18. So for the second synchronous day, we're gonna pick up where we left off on page 253 and then continue on to 261. So after reading this part of chapter 18, I want you to tell me, did Patricia have any other option than to go back home with Abel after the kitchen fire incident? Why or why not? Do you think she did or do you think she did not? Explain your reasoning for me. Okay, continuing on. Um, I want, I think this is a very interesting question. Is forgiveness necessary to move on from a difficult or traumatic situation? Why or why not? Do you feel that it's necessary for you to forgive somebody when you've been in a difficult or traumatic experience with them? Um, obviously, this is connected to what Patricia has gone through with Abel, 
but I want you to tell me just your own, from your own experience, your own opinion, do you think that forgiveness is necessary? Explain why or why not. Okay, so moving on, um, we're going to finish chapter 18 next week because um, it is a big chapter, chapter, so we're trying to take chunks at a time. What I want you to do now is watch our semicolon video. We're continuing on with punctuation and grammar, so take a look at this video. Okay, let's do some review, recap. So semicolons are tricky sometimes because people don't fully understand how to use them. So something to remember about the purpose of a semicolon, it's stronger than a comma but less final than a period. So when you think about periods and commas, when you use a period, you're signaling the fact that you're not done yet with what you're communicating in your clause or your statement, but a period shows that that's it and you're moving on to a new statement or a new clause. So semicolons um, link together independent clauses to show that they're connected in some way, and that has to do with the content itself. So if you have more to say, and maybe it's a really lengthy sentence, and you kind of want to break it up but show that they're related, that would be why you would use semicolons. And there are two rules, if we remember from the video. Number one, they have to connect sentences that are related in some way, because if the content of the sentences are not related, it, you're not using it correctly. It has to be connected in that way. And then you, a really big hint and helpful thing to remember is that semicolons need to be, um, or cannot, excuse me, they cannot be used before a coordinating conjunction. A coordinating conjunction are words like and, but, for, nor, so, and yet. So if you see these words, or if you're writing something and you're using one of these words, that means that you cannot use a semicolon um, before it. Because that's basically accomplishing the same job and it would be super redundant. So what's the purpose? It gives clarity, it gives shows force and style. So you are going to use it specifically when you want to. It's not necessarily, other than those two rules we just went over, there's not like a hard and fast reason or a rhyme to how it's used. So it's all about you as the writer. How are you intentionally communicating? Okay, so I want you to do some practice. I want you to look at each example um, sentence here, and I want you to put a, a semicolon and highlight that so I can see it easily when I'm looking over these slides that you'll submit between the sentences that you think need one. So each, um, take a look at each sentence, I'll read them out for you, and then I want you to determine which ones need one and where would you put it. So number one, I really love Italian food. Pesto pasta is my favorite dish. Number two, I was so tired after basketball practice, but I'm so excited for our game next week. Number three, Mark Hamill joined TikTok. All the Star Wars fans went crazy. Number four, I can't stand it when someone chews their food loudly. It's my biggest pet peeve. And number five, I stayed up way too late last night, so I almost missed the bus. So go ahead and put a highlighted semicolon in the sentences or examples that you think need it. Okay, and then I want you to write your own. I want you to write two sentences about your favorite movie show, favorite movie or TV show, and I want you to use a semicolon to connect those two sentences. So it should be one and one, and somehow you're going to connect it with a semicolon. So as long as you make sure you're not using a coordinating conjunction and that the two sentences are connected in some way via the content, you should be golden. So go ahead and pause this video and write your example. <clears throat> okay, so now we are going to finish the backside of our graphic organizer. So if you were absent on our second synchronous day um, and you did not tell me that ahead of time last week, you will get this paper back when you come back. Um, but those of you that communicated to me that you were going to be absent, you should already have it. So make sure that you finish this. Um, turn it over to the side that talks about our empathy EQ, and it should be the exact same process. So you're going to create a, you're going to create um, or figure out what your subtopics are. What are some subtopics in the book that connect to the idea of empathy? And then from there, you're going to write out or just cite here on your graphic organizer a quote that he uses 
or gives that would connect to your subtopic and ultimately your topic. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Last thing is First Chapter Friday, and this week is pretty cool because we have a kind of a duo. So I've talked to you about Jason Reynolds before. He is one of the most popular and um, up and coming, not even up and coming, he just, he's there. Um, he's one of the best young adult fiction writers um, currently, and he wrote a book in verse a couple years ago called Long Way Down. So it's written in verse like poetry. And then just recently they came out with a graphic novel version of the same story. So um, if you take a look at this link up here, you should be able to hear the audio clip of the first chapter or first couple chapters. And um, I have both of these books in our classroom library. So if you're interested in checking them out, I definitely um, would encourage that. The premise of this story, Long Way Down, is that um, this young man lives in a society where there are certain rules that you have to abide by, and um, if you don't do them, there can be um, consequences that come after that. So he loses his brother, his brother gets shot, and he is following the rules in that whoever, if somebody commits something against you, you have to take revenge on them. That's one of the rules in this society, in this culture. And so he gets on this elevator, prepared to go down and confront the man who killed his brother. And as he's riding down in this elevator every few floors, he kind of gets some visits from people in his past. So there's kind of a magical element to it. Um, it's really, really well done. And um, the graphic novel version is amazing because the graphics are great and it gives a lot of good visuals to the verse novel. So check that out. And as a reminder, asynchronous chapter 16 and 17. And then to fill out this choice reading form, the check-in form should take like maybe a minute or so. It'll be super quick. If you have any questions, please let me know.